Full all over print Doc Martens have been around for decades. And the methods that they have used throughout time has changed and evolved and adjusted and it's per the demand of the customer. So here is one example of a high res full print on a pair of 1460s. So these are the Tardins that came out in the fall of 2019. With these, as well as CBGBs and other ones that really require not so much, it's a picture. It's not so much necessarily a screen print, but it's more of a picture. They've been able to nail down this technique by using straw grain leather. Now, straw grain leather to some could be classified as kind of like the particle board of leather, but it, not, it isn't really. The way that it's constructed for some people could be a lot more stiff than you're used to on regular smooth leather. And for others, like myself, they're ready to go from the start. So one of the great uh, advantages to using the straw grain leather is it just prints really well. You can have these full res images on your shoes and uh, shoes and boots and they look fantastic. The images look great. Now people talk about the wear and how it's going to look over time and how they're going to beat and, and, and just really just what should they expect in the length of owning these shoes or boots. So one thing is that any time that you will get a scuff on it, you'll notice that it'll peak and it'll show some white. The white is the straw grain leather. When we compare it to older models done in the decades before, before they were able to do these types of high res images, we ended up seeing more of a brown biscuit type leather. And I guess a lot of people um, like to side that this is necessarily just a better sign, uh, a better sign of maybe a better, maybe because it could look better than seeing white uh, if you do get scuff marks. But the thing is, is if it wasn't for the straw grain leather and being able to print directly to this white, we wouldn't be able to get these high quality images on this 1460 or this 101. So both, even though they're about a decade apart, both of them use the straw grain and have this white finish and this white tint so they can have these all over prints, high def all over prints done on them. Now in the years past, so for example, uh, I, believe, I believe these are both from the 80s. You'll notice that it wears a bit different. So the print on them is more reminiscent of a screen print than it is these high def type prints that we see on these botanicals and, and the tartans. And the inside is like that biscuit leather. So same thing on these vintage botanicals. So the way that they print has evolved. They've been able to master the craft in order to get uh, to this point. And it's just a matter of preference of how, uh, of what you end up choosing. But this is part of the evolution of it. Doc Martens uh, at its core is continuously trying to refine yet keep to their main core values. And in, in all this time, in 60 years, really not much has changed. You weren't able to get a print like this back in these days before the straw grain leather and the way that they processed it and coated the leather uh, was able to be nailed down. 
figured out and for mass production. You weren't able to do it. So if you want this, this is what you get, at least right now. This wasn't a style or wasn't something that was available in this 101 or the 1460 back in the vintage days, which I consider anything past 20 years prior to the bankruptcy and uh, most of the manufacturing being moved to Asia. That's kind of what I cut off as vintage. You can pretty much make your own. You can say it was 30 years. I don't think that anything under 20 years can be labeled as vintage, but technically uh, there, there isn't a uh, time like there is on, you know, vintage and classic and antique cars that you can like really that everybody's kind of come together and said okay well this is vintage clothing so uh uh yeah this is the evolution of it uh doc martens has changed very little uh, making the sole less dense and make it more comfortable less less heavy throughout the times uh you know there's always been this uh, the, the this this breaking in to Doc Martens, where now with most modern Doc Martens, even modern made in Asia Doc Martens, you really don't have much break-in. Uh, most people that, that experience more break-in uh, pains, uh, it, it's really to the way that their foot uh, ends up having to take more time to, to uh, have the last and, and how the shoe was created really anatomically mold to their feet because of different styles of feet, higher instep, uh, lower arch, flat feet, wide feet. So it, it just depends. Uh, for me, a modern Doc Martens and the fits that they use, both for both Made in England and Made in Asia, just work and they go for me. So I would stick with what works. Uh, I'm definitely guilty of buying a specific brand because of the brand and having it that it really doesn't work for me or that, man, the break-in, it just takes forever. With a person like myself who owns over 70 pairs of Doc Martens alone, I, I don't really get a chance to break in unless I'm traveling. So I don't get to see this wear and tear that a lot of other people experience. My recommendation is to rotate your shoes if you can. If all you can have is one pair of Doc Martens, possibly a straw grain all over print might not be that one pair that would be ideal for you to have. Maybe more of a matte finish or what used to be called a greasy uh, it would, would, would uh, age a lot better and a lot, a lot more with your expectations. So I do make videos on expectations. I talk about values and all other videos. So hopefully you'll be able to uh, look those up in my channel. Here we go, full print Doc Martens last year, about 10 years ago, and then from the 80s. And this one might be, this one actually might be from, from the 90s. Uh, I, I don't know exactly, so that's my estimate. If you do know, please leave that in the comments. Hope this helps. If you liked the video you just saw or wanted to add something to it, go ahead and uh, click on the like and the comment button uh, down below. Also, if you want to keep up with all the videos that I create, subscribe, and then once you subscribe, you can tap on the bell and then you'll receive an email. Uh, so you're always kind of in the know. I mean, you watched it, right? So I guess you liked it. You got to tell the, you know, algorithms what to show other people and what people are interested in. And besides that, I need validation. I need to know that I'm making something that people actually enjoy and want me to continue making more of, right? What do you think, Cherry? Yeah? Think they should do it?